Hi, this is Steve Mathers from Nature Spot. In this short presentation, I'm going to focus on the life cycle of dragonflies and damselflies. It's timely to release this at present because now in early May, the first of these wonderful insects are just beginning to emerge. In any continuous loop, you have to break in at some point to describe the cycle. So let's start at the top with the eggs hatching into larvae in the aquatic environment. The larvae then take one to two years and sometimes even five years to mature. They go through a series of up to a dozen or more molts in this process. Note that there is no pupil stage So dragons and damsels spend the overwhelming majority of their lifespan as aquatic larvae. Unless we're able to do research in environmentally controlled tanks with sophisticated underwater photography, most of us can't readily observe these aquatic stages of development. Many of the species we're familiar with have fairly precise environmental conditions as well. Here we present a simplified classification of our main aquatic environments in Leicestershire and Rutland. The main distinction drawn here between flowing and standing water bodies. Dragonfly and damselfly larvae are distinct. The main difference is that the damsels have a three-pronged tail of caudal laminae. These absorb oxygen a bit like the gills in a fish. Dragonfly larvae are more robust and larger and they can reach as much as five centimeters long. We see here one from a southern hawker. Let's have a look now at the emergence of the larvae using a sub, the southern hawker as an example. First, the larvae will climb out of the water onto emergent vegetation or onto the bank of the water body. Here we see a southern hawker climbing up a water soldier frond. And the next thing that happens is the dragonfly then breaks out of the head, uh, sorry, of the hard carapace called the exuvia. The southern hawker and some other dragons then withdraw most of their body and wait for their legs to harden and gain strength. Note the small proto wings here at this stage. They then perform a backflip, grasping the abandoned exuvia with their legs, whilst the rest of the abdomen slides out of the exuvia. The dragonfly then pumps up its wings and body and dries out. Finally, it looks like a proper adult dragonfly awaiting its maiden flight. At this stage, it is a teneral form with silvery wings and subdued body colors. Here's a second sequence to let you focus this time on the progressive deployment of the wings. Note the rapid increase in size of the wings through this sequence. These shots are taken probably five or 10 minutes apart. Sadly, this complex operation doesn't always go smoothly, and there are casualties when the wings don't unfurl properly. Teneral adults quickly mature into breeding adults, and mating takes place as follows. The male transfers sperm from the tip of his abdomen to his secondary genitalia under the second abdominal segment. The male then grabs a female by the neck, as in damselflies, 
or back of the head as in some dragonflies with his claspers. The female then sw swings the tip of her abdomen up, locks onto the underside of the top of the male's abdomen. Sperm is then transferred and eggs are subsequently fertilized. The pair may stay in this linked wheel state for just seconds or up to several hours in some species. The females then deposit the eggs, either in or close to water. Female dragonflies, such as the brown hawker and southern hawker here, um, will uh, deposit the eggs directly into the water. Whereas in damselflies, the pair tend to fly in tandem with the male tugging the female along as she progressively dips her, the tail of her abdomen into the water to release the eggs. So let's recap the life cycle, moving from eggs through to this long period as an aquatic larvae, the emergence of the larvae, the production then of the tenoral adult, which matures into an adult, which mates, and then the female oviposits the eggs in the water body or near it, and the process starts again. It's certainly the right time to record dragonflies and damselflies now they are emerging. Immatures and tenorals without full colouring can be difficult to ID, however. Timing is also important to help establish the ID, since many species only fly in fairly constrained windows even during the summer. It's very useful if you can take photographs, if at all possible, and learn the key features needed to clinch the ID of particular species. And finally, enjoy the experience, and in addition to establishing the ID, also try to note where you can, in the record comments box, what the damsel or dragonfly was doing, which is gonna lead you to a better understanding of the behavior of these fascinating insects. We look forward very much to receiving your records at www.naturespot.org.uk. Thank you.